In order to meet the challenges of the financial crisis, the Fed changed the composition of the balance sheet. What's on it and how will the Fed exit its stimulus programs? Marvin Goodfriend is a professor of economics at Carnegie Mellon's Tepper School of Business. He joins us now from Pittsburgh to help us tackle those questions. Uh, professor, thank you very much for joining us. Appreciate it. Uh, My pleasure. Let's talk first of all about how the Fed got here because this is indeed a big change for it to, to take other things like mortgage-backed securities onto its balance sheet, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. The Fed, uh, before uh, August 2007, had a policy which, had, which was uh, named Treasuries Only. It was what was taught to me when I first came to the Fed 25 years ago. The Treasuries would, the uh, Federal Reserve would buy U.S. Treasury securities only, except for occasional what we call last resort lending to depositories uh, in the Fed's capacity as a uh, support for the banking system. The Treasury's only policy was uh, only violated uh, by as much as $30 billion at the 9-11 crisis. Uh, today, the Fed has sold off most of its Treasuries and holds anything but Treasuries, mortgage-backed securities, uh, various credit instruments, and so forth. So, so what exactly is the mix here, and what's the size of the balance sheet and sort of how it's divided? Well, I want to, if you, if you allow me to do so, I want to I say the size is, on the li is determined on the liability side. The liabilities of the Federal Reserve are currency. The hand-to-hand -hand currency that we all carry around the country mm -hmm. are, are, are part of the money supply issued by the Fed. Uh, there's about a trillion dollars of currency on the Fed's balance sheet. That's the Fed's, half the Fed's liabilities. The other half is what we call bank reserves. These are essentially electronic deposits of the U.S. banking system at the Federal Reserve System. In this last year and a half, the Federal Reserve created about a trillion dollars of new reserves in the banking system. The Fed's balance sheet, size-wise, had been around $1 trillion before this crisis started. So the Fed doubled its balance sheet and used the proceeds to buy all kinds of stuff. Well, let's focus on mortgage-backed securities specifically. The Fed has said it's going to wind down its program of buying mortgage-backed securities. What is it going to do with the MBSs that it has? Good question. Now, so th this is something I have to speculate on because everybody's wondering and I have right. no crystal ball on this. What do you think they're going to do with the MBS? <laughs> okay. What, what, I, what I'll tell you is what could happen, which I think is an interesting way to approach the subject. The Federal Reserve uh, balance sheet is about a trillion dollars or more, more than that of, of these mortgage-backed securities, which are essentially um, government agency securities issued to fund mortgages issued in the United States over the last couple of years, last few years. The Fed could get rid of these uh, without the government getting rid of these if the U.S. Treasury would simply write up some Treasury bills and swap Treasury bills with the Fed, and the Fed would give the U.S. government mortgage-backed securities so that these could be held elsewhere in the government and not in the independent central bank. That's the simplest way to make the Fed independent of these credit programs which are causing so much trouble in Congress. But doesn't that cause then some some problems for the the federal government if if it's holding these well, uh, assets? Well, uh, as a first approximation, suppose we we think and there's a good case to be made that the mortgage markets in the private sector are not healthy enough to handle the, the outright sale of these from the government. The next best thing to do is to make the Federal Reserve independent and to put these securities in the housing agencies of the federal government where they belong. Of course, the problem here is, 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 is the following. The Fed is an off-budget agency, and when the Federal Reserve holds $1 trillion of mortgage-backed securities, it doesn't come under the debt ceiling. So if the swap were to happen that I've just imagined, mm -hmm. and the government created a trillion dollars of new debt to swap out these mortgage-backed securities, that trillion dollars would be on the debt ceiling, and the Congress would have to make room for it. So do you think there is any other option, however? Well, there's no other option except selling these mortgage backs, a trillion, more, a trillion dollars worth of mortgage backs, back to the private markets. Uh, and um, my guess is that there are not a lot of people right now who want to try to do that, given the weakness in, in mortgage markets as, as we go forward this year. So, Professor, let's suppose then that the federal government does indeed take these onto its balance sheet. Uh, then what happens? I mean, will they hold them for some period of time and eventually, in theory, the market will get better and they'll be able to sell them? That's a good question. Uh, I, I would think of the, the mortgage market would improve over the next few years. My guess is that it will take some time for these mortgage-backed securities to be sold outright into the private sector, just because there'll be there, there's a trillion dollars of these things, and it will take time to feed them back into the system. And there'll be nervousness about the system's willingness to digest these mortgage-backs. So I think they're going to be somewhere on the government balance sheet for quite some time.